Imagine a world where you and your team know exactly what work needs to be done and in what order. Imagine never wasting time on unimportant tasks or struggling to stay on track. Well, Jira Backlog can assist in making that a reality. As agile project management grows in popularity, tools like Jira are quickly becoming the go-to for managing sprints and scrum projects. And for a good reason. Jira Backlog helps you organize your tasks, issues, and projects into a list of priorities that you can handle. Jira can be game-changing for keeping your team on track and making progress towards your goals, whether you're using Scrum, Kanban, or another Agile framework. In this video, you will learn how to use Jira Backlog's power to create user stories, put them in the right order of importance, and keep your team moving forward. We'll go over the main ideas of the product backlog and then look closely at the Jira backlog feature. Backlog is one of the key concepts in Scrum and several other agile methodologies. Here is the definition of the product backlog from the Scrum guide. The product backlog is an emergent ordered list of what is needed to improve the product. It is the single source of work undertaken by the Scrum team. But what does that really mean for you and your team? First and foremost, the product backlog is a list of things you need to do to improve your product. It is ordered by priority based on how much business value each task will bring. And as your project evolves, so will the backlog. It is an emergent and ever-changing living document that will guide your team's work. There is a lot of theory regarding the product backlog, and if you want to dig deep into it, there are a bunch of videos you can watch and find on this topic, including the one on this channel. However, this video is focused on the Jira backlog feature and how to use Jira to manage your backlog. Let's just highlight a couple of crucial points about the product backlog before we begin. Product backlog is a list of things needed to improve a product. Product backlog is ordered by priority, which is driven by business value. Product backlog is emergent, it changes over time. And product backlog is a single source of work undertaken by a team. With that in mind, let's assume we are working on an e-commerce application with fairly standard features. On a high level, we can list the features required to improve our products as follows. Allow users to browse products for sale as anonymous or logged in users. While browsing, users can add products to their personal wish list. While browsing, users can add products to their shopping cart. Users can purchase items and pay by credit card or PayPal. Should a user decide to purchase items in the shopping cart, it will have to log in or create an account if they don't have one already. Users can set alerts on the price for items in their wishlist and receive email notifications when prices change. We've taken these high-level requirements and broken them down into smaller, manageable tasks using sticky notes. We have several epics at the top and a bunch of related user stories below each epic. And now we are going to see how to recreate this structure in the Jira backlog. Before we do that, Take a moment to review our sticky note breakdown and get a feel for how we organized our epics and user stories. Then let's jump into Jira and start creating. So we need to create all these items in the Jira backlog, and then we need to prioritize them using features that Jira backlog provides. As you probably know, Jira provides two types of projects, company-managed projects and team-managed projects. It is important to note that these two types of projects have slightly different backlog functionality. But don't worry, we will cover both in this video. We will first look in the backlog on the company managed project using the Scrum template, and then we will go over the backlog of the team managed project. Let's create a brand new project using the Scrum template. Set the project type to company managed project and call it the Ecom app. As soon as the project is created, I will navigate to the backlog screen where we will complete the rest of the tasks. 
According to our sticky note backlog, we need to create 7 epics and 24 stories. Epics are usually a good place to start, and stories can be added later. In addition, adding a story to an existing epic is more efficient than adding a story to a new epic. Considering all of that, let's first create our 7 epics. We will start with the account management epic. There are two ways to create epics in Jira Backlog, and the obvious one is to use the main Create button right here in the middle of the screen. After clicking the Create button, a generic Create Issue pop-up appears. First, we have to select the epic issue type. Then, we will enter the epic name, which will be Account Management, followed by the Summary field. And let's enter Account Management features there. We will leave the description field empty and the priority set to medium. Now we can click the create button in the pop-up and the account management epic is created. During the creation process, we were given a small message to let us know the epic was created successfully. However, the epic cannot be seen anywhere. Now, Jira is an excellent project management tool, but sometimes using it can be pretty confusing, and this is an example of such behavior. The problem is that the backlog screen by design does not show epics in the default screen layout. Instead, epics are placed on the epics panel, which is hidden by default, and we have to click on the epics label to make it visible. Now we can finally see the account management epic we created, and if we look carefully, we can also see the create epic link here. I mentioned earlier that epics can be created in two ways, and using this link represents the second option that is actually more efficient. When we click on the create epic link, we get the create epic pop-up instead of the generic create issue one, and the epic issue type is already selected. So let's add the next epic, searching products, fill in the name and summary, and click Create. The new epic is created and placed in the list of epics. Now, we will create the remain epics using the same steps, and while we do that, I will stop recording and resume when everything is ready. We have all our epics in Jira, and we can move on to entering stories. We can do that in two ways as well. The first option is to use the generic Create button, and the second option, as you might have guessed, is using the Create Issue in Epic link in the Epics panel. So let's start with the generic Create button. We get the same Create Issue pop-up as when we created the first Epic, but this time we need to ensure that the Story type is selected from the Issue Type dropdown. The first story is Create Account, so we will enter create account in the summary field. In the description field, we will enter users who don't have an account will be able to create one using their email address and password. Password should be at least eight characters long. The description field should include all the information about the story. Nevertheless, you may not have all the details when you're creating your story and it is fine to add more details later, as long as they are finalized before sprint planning. As for the priority, let's keep it at medium, and just below is the epic link field, which we will use to link this story to its epic. Once we expand the epic link dropdown, we will select the account management epic and click create. As new stories are created, they are placed in the backlog, and you can see that create account is already there. Let's move on to the next story, which happens to be the login story. This time, let's use the create issue in Epic link from the Epics panel. Make sure you use the link from the correct Epic, because each Epic has its own link. The login story belongs to the account management, so we will use this link. Once we click the link, we get the Create Issue pop-up. We should verify that Story is selected in the issue type, enter Login in the Summary field, and in the description enter Existing User can log in with email and password. 
Notice that account management is already selected in the Epic link and we don't have to search for it. This is very handy, especially when there are many epics on the list. And after we click on create, the login store is created and it appears in the backlog. There is a third way to create a story. At the bottom of the backlog, there is a barely noticeable create issue link. It works slightly different because it uses an inline editing concept instead of a pop dialog. When I click on it, the basic inline editor becomes active and I can enter the story name, but I cannot enter anything else. So how do we assign a story that was created this way to its epic? It is actually very easy. A simple drag of the story and drop over the associated epic will make that happen. We will use the same approach and repeat the same steps for the remaining stories. Again, I will stop the recording and continue once all stories are created and available in the backlog. Now I have all my stories in the backlog. However, you can see that they are sorted by the order in which they were created, rather than by their priority. In our earlier discussion, we mentioned that the product backlog requires every item to be prioritized, with the most important items at the top and the least important ones at the bottom. Keeping that in mind, let's see what features of the Jira backlog screen make it possible to prioritize stories. Most of the time, we will not be able to create a perfectly sorted list where we can confidently establish the relative priority of each issue against all other issues. Nevertheless, we can create a more generic grouping, such as separating issues with higher priority from those with lower priority. Jira Backlog provides a quick way to do that by right-clicking on an issue and then sending higher priority issues to the top of the backlog and lower priority issues to the bottom. Any e-commerce site will only be successful if it can produce a fair number of sales. So we want to prioritize stories that are critical or directly supportive of closing a sale. Those would be all payment stories and stories about adding products to the shopping cart. There is a little trick to doing it efficiently. We want the stories that are essential to closing the sale to appear first in the backlog, then those that are directly supportive. But if we move the critical stories to the top of the backlog first and then follow up with the supportive stories, we will end up with the supportive stories at the top of the backlog which is different from what we aim to accomplish. So we want to start with supportive stories, move them to the top, and then send critical stories to the top and let them push supportive stories down. Let's assume supportive stories are ones that are related to viewing products and enabling personalized experience. As we go through our stories and see ones that fall into the supportive category, we will right-click them and send them to the top of the backlog. View product details belongs to that group. View similar products as well, and then a few others also. After we are done with the supportive stories, we can have a look for critical stories and do the same thing. Of course, pay by credit card is one of them, pay by PayPal as well, Add product to shopping cart also fits in there and then few others also. Repeating that process for each issue quickly segments all issues in the backlog and allows the Scrum team to focus only on high priority issues initially and set their individual priorities without worrying about issues with a lesser priority. Now we have the most important stories at the top of the backlog and less important ones at the bottom. However, we never did anything to prioritize individual stories from the high priority group against each other. Relative prioritization of one issue over another is crucial for a good backlog and doing it in the Jira backlog is very simple. We just need to drag the story and drop it where we want to place it. For instance, we want pay by credit card to have the highest priority. So we will just drag that story to the top. 
if the next priority is add to shopping cart, we will take that story and then place it below pay by credit card. I will prioritize a few more stories, just enough to have about five stories stacked in priority order. Another equally important component of grooming the backlog is ensuring that each story can be completed in a single sprint. As per Scrum Theory, if a story is too large to fit in one sprint, it should be split into two or more smaller stories. This is a very easy to do using the split issue feature in the right-click pop-up. For instance, if it turns out that view product details is too large for a single sprint, right-clicking on that issue and selecting split issue brings the pop-up where we can split view product details into view description story, view photo story, and view pricing story. Right-click pop-up also includes the copy issue link feature, which places the issue's full URL in the clipboard, allowing it to be bookmarked or sent to someone for direct access to that issue. Several other commands are included in the right-click pop-up. The delete command simply deletes the issue after the confirmation in the warning pop-up. The add flag command first prompts for additional comments and then displays a little flag beside the issue. It has a counterpart, remove flag, which also asks for comment first, and then removes the flag from the issue. Finally, the print selected card command allows printing the issue in a card format that can be pinned to the wall if the team uses a physical scrum board. The search box is handy for ad hoc searches when looking for an issue by its name or just a part of its name. If you type view, the list of issues will be filtered down to only those that contain the term view in their names. You can also type a part of the issue's number and the list is filtered again, allowing you to easily spot the one you're looking for. Besides the text filter, there are several other default filters. Clicking one or more user avatars will show issues assigned to any of the selected users. And clicking it again, this selects a user and updates the filtered list. The two remaining quick filters are only my issues, which does exactly what its name says, shows only issues that are assigned to you, the current user. The other one is recently updated, which will show only issues that have been recently updated. It is easy to lose track of which filters are turned on, and if that happens, it is very simple to clear filters using the clear all link. When we discussed the creation of stories, I mentioned that very often you would not have all the details of the story at the time of its creation. Those details are usually added later, any time before sprint planning. It is very easy to edit story details. Clicking on a story opens the story details panel on the right side, where we can modify the description, priority, story points, and many other story attributes. The list of attributes can be configured on the project level, so you might see slightly different attributes in your project. However, description, priority, and store points, story points will most likely be there. The Jira Backlog screen also includes functionality for sprint creation and release management. However, they are not technically part of Backlog Management and deserve a separate tutorial, so we will not cover them in this video. This concludes the review of the Company Managed Project Backlog screen, and we can now switch to and look at the Team Managed Project Backlog. You will quickly realize that although it looks a bit different, it has very similar functionality. To save some time, I already created a team managed project and very much like in the company managed project, the link to the backlog screen is right here in the left navigation bar. When we get to the screen, we see that the generic create button is in the same spot and works exactly the same as in the company managed project. We have the inline option for story creation, which also exists in the company managed project backlog screen. 
and we also have an inline option for epic creation that one does not exist in the company managed project backlog of course a drag and drop feature for associating stories with epics is also available now before we get into this screen's remaining features I will pause the recording and create a few more epics and stories to help demonstrate those features. And we are back and we have some epics and stories to play around with. If we look into the toolbar over here, we see that the quick search box is at the same spot and we have user avatars to help us filter stories by one user or several users to whom stories are assigned. Next to it is the EPIC filter, which does not exist in the company managed project. We can use this filter to view only issues belonging to one specific EPIC, two EPICs, or issues that do not belong to any EPIC. However, we can do the same thing. We can do the same filtering by clicking on these EPICs plates on the left. To see EPIC details and edit EPIC information, we need to expand the EPIC and click on EPIC details. That opens this panel on the left, which contains all EPIC attributes and makes them available for editing. Editing story details is quite similar, except that the panel with details of the story opens up as soon as we click on a specific story. There is no view details button like the one we have for EPICs. You might recall that right-clicking on a story in the Company Manage Project Backlog provided quite a few features, including sending a story to the top or bottom of the backlog. Right-click is very similar in this screen. We can see that moving to the top or bottom of the backlog is present, as are deleting a story and copying a story link. Adding a flag is also present, but works slightly different. It adds a flag but does not prompt us for a note as it did on the other screen in a company managed project. Change parent is a new functionality that allows us to change the epic with which our story is associated. Two features we had in the company managed project backlog do not exist here. There is no ability to split a story into two or more stories, as well as the ability to print a story card. They are simply unavailable for team managed projects. This concludes our Jira Backlog Overview. The information and tools provided in this video will equip you with the necessary knowledge to start utilizing Jira to manage your project backlog effectively. You can begin your journey now and see the positive results it brings. We hope you found this video helpful, and if so, please give it a like Share it with others and don't forget to subscribe to our channel through the link displayed on your screen. By subscribing, you will be able to stay informed on any upcoming free resources, discount coupons for our courses, and also new videos that we release. Thank you for watching.